What's going on, NextGen fam? Welcome back to Men's Your Momentum with NextGen HQ. I am so psyched for this week's episode. We get to sit down with Iggy Rodriguez, the head of partnerships at Therabody. On top of that, Iggy has also been a contestant on The Bachelorette. He's an advisor and investor in startups and so much more. And we dove into so many incredible nuggets in this episode. You get to learn everything from the importance of being consistent and Iggy's tips for actually falling in love with the process, not just the big moments and opportunities. He then talks about the importance of being able to empty your tank and really give your all to every day. And finally, we wrap up with some tips on building partnerships as well as his advice for startup founders as an advisor and an investor. So, so much in this episode for you, no matter where you are in your stage, an absolutely incredible episode. And I hope you enjoy this Mentor Momentum featuring Iggy Rodriguez. Looking back, you know, as you're kind of coming out of college in that early, you know, 20 year old age, um, what, what is maybe one piece of advice that you would have given to that version of yourself, that 20 year old Iggy coming out of school? I would tell that person that you spend way too much time thinking about what other people think of you mm. and to really pursue the things that are important to you that you are passionate about and that drive you and not worry so much about the things that you think people would like you to do or the path that they would like you to take or that, that, that's been pre-constructed. Um, I think that, and I think, I think I think younger folks now are doing a better job of really pursuing their passion and not necessarily doing things because it's the way they've always been done. And it's such a classical hierarchical type infrastructure that I grew up in where it's like, you know, you got your undergrad, you got your MBA, like that, like that was the route that you had to take. Yeah. Not, not that there were a, you know, a lack of options, but it just seemed like that was the, the right thing to do and, and, and where people pushed you. And I would urge myself to do things for myself and not because I thought it was a thing I was supposed to do. I have, and I do this, it's funny, you know, I, I probably wouldn't have done this a year and a half ago, but I've been, you know, I, I've been going to uh, an amazing therapist of mine that I see probably once every couple of weeks and just working on myself again, trying to be the best version of myself I can be, not just for work, but for my friends and, you know, for the people around me. And, you know, I have ego is the enemy written on my mirror that I look at every single morning. Um, so to that point, you know, taking a look at, at at all the things that you don't have makes you lose focus on the things that you do have and kind of steers you away from the path that, that you should take that's the best route for you. Um, so while Instagram is a great place for for creators and to be inspired, it's also a really difficult place to exist because it only shows you the highlights. It's a highlight reel, right? It's like you're watching ESPN, you know, the yeah. top 10 of someone's existence. And that isn't necessarily reality. And I think that people get so enamored with those highlights that they, they expect their life to be very similar where it's not, I mean, there are ebbs and flows and ups and downs as, as, as I'm sure you're very familiar with. And it's so easy to get lost in the ups and not realize that sometimes shit is hard. And it's, you're not going to be successful. Maybe you get fired from that job, or maybe that startup doesn't raise that money, or, you know, you, you don't date that girl, right? You know, you don't, you don't talk to that Instagram model, right? Or you don't get that job you want, but yeah. it's, it's all about continuing to, to work on yourself and to, again, pursue that passion that you have. I want to dive into, cause I feel like it, it's gotta be really interesting. Your, your morning routine and, and how you think about setting yourself up for success every day. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of writing stuff on the mirror, but I think other people would be like, hey, wait, I can write stuff on my mirror. Like I'm not going to mess the thing up. So yeah, right. dive, dive in, man, whatever you can share, you're willing to share about, you know, how you set yourself up for success every day. I've got the same routine every morning and consistency, whether it's, you know, whether it's in business and friendship and in and, and fitness, consistency is, is the key to everything. Um, and it's a really old adage and it's kind of cheeky, but you know, I, I think you'll see this kind of like, you know, written in those like live, laugh, love lettering, but it's like, you know, you have to fall in love with the process, right? It's not just about the wins. It's not just about being successful. It's about falling in love with the, the process of being successful. And, and that starts with having a really good routine. For me, I make my bed every morning. So yeah. I wake up, I make my bed right away and I get that first win, right? That first like, okay, I accomplished something the moment that I woke up. And I feel like it puts me in a much better headspace. Um, headspace, I actually, I use Headspace as like my meditative app. So I make my bed, I lie back down, um, you know, I, I take a look at it, at what I want to listen to that morning. I take 10 to 12 minutes to just kind of calm myself because the last thing I want to do is wake up and like most people look at Instagram, check my emails, you know, look at all the notifications that have popped up overnight. It just, I think it, it immediately builds almost a sense of anxiety. Like I have so much to get done now. Like I'm rushing out of bed. I'm rushing, I'm rushing. Um, 
it's, it's about taking that time in the morning for yourself to prepare your mind for all the clutter that's about to happen. So I declutter and um, I take a look at the things that I have written down on my mirror and there, there are a handful of them. Mm. Uh, ego is the enemy is my favorite. Uh, another one to get out of your head because uh, I feel like I'm in my head way too much, whether it's work or personal. Yeah. Um, I write down two or three things that I'm happy about from the day before. Mm. I go, I, I, I did this well, or I'm proud of this moment, or this thing helped me, or I helped someone or whatever. And I write something that I needed to work on from the day before. And I feel like it, it puts me in a position to be able to acknowledge and celebrate the successes that I've had, but also recognize that there are still things I have to work on. Um, and not in a disparaging way, but simply something that gives me some perspective. And then the last part, which is my favorite, probably the least favorite for most, I take an absolute freezing cold shower. And then I'm there for about five or 10 minutes. I pop out, I get the day going and I'm, I'm ready for anything after that. It's so, so incredible. Like most people strive to have a morning routine like that, you know, and they're like, that, that's the things they want in their life. Um, was there a moment that you were like, that you remember being like, okay, I'm going to take control of my mornings, take control of my life or a gradual build or anything you can give to the folks that are like, man, I really wish I could have a similar routine. I think people build it up in their mind. Like it's this massive obstacle. Like, like, like most things, like, like most things, it's a construct of people's perception of, 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 of what they're trying to accomplish. Um, and I, I don't remember what book I was reading, but you know, I was going through it and there was, there was something to the effect of like, if you're holding really, really heavy luggage and you no longer want to hold that luggage, what do you do? Just fucking drop it and keep walking, you know? And I feel like it, for me, like it, it was, it was a strange moment where it was like, if I want to just wake up 30 minutes earlier, like there's no trick to doing it. And I, th I think, I think people so frequently try and find the trick or the shortcut or, or, or the way to get there more quickly or, 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 or maybe more easily, right? How do I do this more easily? There's no fucking trick, man. Like th there's no easy route. It's if I want to wake up 30 minutes earlier, get my ass to bed 30 minutes before that, before I usually do, or don't have that cup of coffee or don't go out and have that drink, like mm. be responsible for your actions. And it's really not as hard as people think. It's just a matter of discipline. Yeah, I, I, I got to ask, we got an incredible community member submitted question and you're making me think uh, of, you know, the question that, uh, that this guy asked uh, a close community member of Next Gen, Adam Michael Ware, who, who was asking, you know, as your work at as the director of partnerships for Therabody, how, how has that impacted your own holistic health? And I feel like you're already diving into it, man. You're, you're really, he wanted to know, do you live your work? And I think the answer is yes, but I, I'll let you uh, opine as well. Um, yes. You know, I think it, it really opened me up to different recovery modalities. So mm -hmm. I, I'm a former football player, rugby player, and I was so used to traditional recovery, right? Stretch, yeah. you know, maybe you stretch in the morning, maybe you stretch in the evening, Theragun, Therabody, you know, the, the device that, that's been created as of, you know, four or five years ago, it, it's such a revolutionary recovery tool because it allows you to have almost, almost like a sweetest massage, like in your home, right? And as a result of that, I'm just, I'm so aware of the other types of recoveries and recovery products and services that, that are being communicated out in the world. So I've, I've been, I do ice baths regularly now, which are my favorite, you know, heat therapy, lymphatic drainage. Um, and, and I have the luxury of being able to test some of that stuff out and kind of like finding those places to do it. Um, I probably still don't do as good of a job about like recovery as I should with as much as, as, as I work out because I think it's like, as like a classical athlete, it's like, if something hurts, like, man, you like rub dirt in it and you'll yeah, be yeah. fine. Right. But as I get older, it's like that thing hurts. I know it's going to hurt like longer than I'd like it to. So I'm going to actively work on it. So we've had some really cool moments here in the last, you really last 12 months or so. It's been such a roller coaster for us. And we've had everything from, you know, major sports partnerships with groups like Real Madrid, Paris Saint-Germain, FC Bayern. Um, we'll have a bunch of domestic sports partnerships, uh, retail partnerships. And it's been, you know, the, the at-home health and fitness community is just, that space is, I mean, you're wearing a whoop, right? Like that space is just, is, is blown up in the last 12 months. One thing that, you know, I, I would be super helpful to, to learn about is how you think about building these incredible partnerships. You're building partnerships with like some of the biggest brands in the world, you know, obviously for any of the soccer fans in the world, you just referenced three of the biggest teams out there. So what are you <laughs> thinking about when you're coming into the room and, and you know, talking to them and uh, is there anything that goes through your mind um, when you're thinking about these large, incredible partnerships that you're forming 
Um, and again, I think this might sound a little cheeky as well, but it's, it's about leading with authenticity and sincerity. Like our, our goal, very much like Nike's mantra is if you have a body, you're an athlete. You know, we believe that if you have a body, you can benefit from percussive therapy, but, you know, yeah. going to sleep better, waking up easier, being more mobile, like being able to play with your kids and, and not having your back hurt or being able to go for that walk. If you're the 65 year old lady who, you know, takes a walk around the block. And I reference that because that's my mom, you know, like. How, you know, how, how do we impact more than just your elite athlete? And, you know, we obviously partner with sports teams to be able to distribute that message and tell that story through, you know, sort of these, you know, these idols that people have. Um, but we lead with education, authenticity, really the efficacy of, of, of our devices and how it impacts people. And it's about partnering with brands that, that see the value in in our brand and, and what we do for a community and, and who we are is, is not just a business, but, but, a, but a group of people that represent that business. And if they find the value in us, then, and they find the value in our mission, then they're, they're the right partner. And it doesn't have to be, you know, Paris St. Germain, you know, it can be, you know, youth football club in, in downtown LA. And like, to be very, very honest, like we give a shit about them too. Like we, like, we really do care. And that, I think that's the thing that, I really respect and appreciate about this team and business, maybe more than any other group I've ever been with is there is a real sense of caring about what we're doing. Like we really do feel like we have an opportunity to change the world right now. And we're trying to do that as authentically and genuinely as possible. Find partners that believe in your mission. Mm -hmm. It's not always about the biggest, the best. It's about finding partners that believe in you and that are willing to be true partners and not just slap a logo next to theirs and say, Hey, we're a partner now but that actually add value in, in an area that you're looking to add value and that believe in you and believe the business and believe in the purpose. And that that's the start of a good partnership because you can, you can build off that. You can't really build off, Hey, here's my logo next to your logo. That's not, that's not a partnership. It's not a relationship. Is there a time in your life where, you know, you made a mistake along your career and your personal life that you've learned from that our people can now avoid from hearing your story? Um, overreaching. In, in any area of your life, whether it's living outside your means, whether it's taking on more responsibility than you're prepared for, uh, whether it's over-promising, yeah. overreaching is, it's such an attractive thing to be able to say, I can do this or accept the responsibility because you wanna do that, right? And it's not, it, it's not that you maybe don't have the ability to or, or, or the desire to, but you're not prepared necessarily. And you have to be, you have to be able, and again, another kind of cheeky old man, you know, response, but you've got to be able to follow before you can lead. And, you know, you have to be able to, to learn before you're able to teach. And I think so many people are looking to, to get to where they're going so much more quickly than is, is not possible, but it is sort of generally expected, right? Again, you talk about entrepreneurship being sexy. That's the highlight reel. Like the okay. Bentley they purchased is the highlight reel, right? Like, you didn't see them living on their, you know, their friend's couch for 12 months when nobody would help them fundraise, you know, like you only see the highlights. So I would say that overreaching, living outside your means, working outside your means is the number one way to prevent yourself from being successful. This is an absolute marathon. Everything is like, I don't know where I'm going to be in three years, five years. I, it's every single day I'm trying to do is the, the best I can be to be the best business person I can be, be the best friend I can be, be the best you know, partner I can be. Um, and one of my, I talked to a lot of my athlete friends about business and investing right now. And, um, you know, I asked them, you know, how, how do you win every day? Like, what's, what's your daily win? And my favorite response is that, that I, like, I, I empty my tank. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I've been successful that day if I empty my tank, which is I'm doing everything I can to the best of my ability at work. And he's got a wife and kids. He's like, I want to be the best father. I want to be the best husband. I want to be the best business person. So at the end of the day, I feel like I can go to sleep and I empty, like, you know, I, I emptied my tank. And I think that most people are, are looking to overextend themselves and mm -hmm. take on more than they, than they probably should to start. What is maybe one thing that you would say to that audience and, and one thing that you talk to the companies you advise on, on what they should be focusing on and how they can, you know, be the best entrepreneur that they can be? I think it ties into to kind of what we've been talking about. It's, it, it's the purpose behind what they're doing. Um, you know, if it's not just about making the most money or having, you know, the, the best valuation or the best EBITDA, like, like if that's, if that's what you're doing it for, then, yeah. then you're going to run into a hurdle and you're going to end up not wanting to do it because you don't have that passion about it. And I think it's, yeah, I, I relate business to, you know, relationships a lot. And 
Like the reason that, you know, my parents have stayed married for 45 years is because they love each other so much that they're, they're not willing to, to sacrifice that togetherness, right? Yeah. The reason that entrepreneurs are successful is that they're so in love with what they're doing. They're not willing to accept that no, or they're okay being turned down by 50 different angel investors before they figure out what that next step is. Like it, it's this unwillingness to quit. Um, and my advice is if you have a passion for something and you truly have a passion for something, follow that and don't allow people who don't have the same passion to, to tell you that you shouldn't pursue that. Um, but be honest with yourself. And again, that, that comes with, with wins and losses and perspective and, uh, and, and taking it one day at a time and, and really being deliberate in your approach. I think that people who continue to have that passion time over time over time will end up being successful. Maybe it's not the thing that you started or you thought you'd be successful with, but that winning every day will put you in a position to, to, to be able to find that success in, in, in whatever it is that, that ends up kind of falling in your lap eventually. That was Mentor Momentum, sharing life and business lessons from incredible leaders. Looking for more momentum? Subscribe to our weekly Momentum newsletter at nextgenhq.com and check out our other podcast, Momentum Audio, on any of your favorite podcast channels. Now that's momentum. <laughs>